Hi, this video will discuss what I consider to be the best iPad apps for designers going into 2018. It is an update of my original video. I'm taking a slightly different approach this time and looking firstly at general apps and then I'll drill down more specifically to design apps. I'm also assuming that you have a high-end stylus, preferably an Apple Pencil because most of the apps that I'm reviewing work best with this hardware. I'm working on a first generation 12 inch iPad Pro with Apple Pencil. Before I get started I wanted to quickly discuss the growing trend with apps to go the subscription route. Uh, many app developers are now flirting with increasing their revenue streams through subscription models and I encourage designers to resist this and to vote with their feet and support those apps that stick to non-subscription solutions. There are only three subscriptions that I'm comfortable signing up for. Apple Music, because I cannot design without music and it is incredible value for money. Unlimited access to millions of songs for a very small monthly sub. Creative Cloud, which is mostly for the essential uh, desktop apps, but also a slew of mildly useful iPad apps too. And finally Magster, because as a designer I need to read my monthlies like Computer Arts, Imagine FX, 3D World, Web Designer, etc. And however you look at it, a Magster sub saves you a ton of money. Individual purchases or subscriptions would increase my annual spend on Mags tenfold. As a very long time uh, Adobe Creative Suite licensee, I'll, I think um, that Creative Cloud is very affordable. If you take the big Adobe apps like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, After Effects, Premiere Pro, even Audition, Dreamweaver, Animate, the $40 per month subscription works out to less than $5 per month per app and you get a lot more for this, uh, so it's good value. And while it is possible to be a designer without Adobe software, it makes life a lot easier to have the big guns on your desktop for the heavy duty design work. So it's important to keep the Creative Cloud subscription cost in mind as a benchmark of affordability for other apps. As consumers, we need to be more savvy about our purchases because iPad apps are now entering a new pro phase. Most of us are used to iPad apps being cheap, limited and disposable. Now we have to think more carefully about our purchases because they are asking for serious money. We need to make sure we get value and support. Here are some questions you should be asking yourself to help determine if you should dive into a subscription or not. Firstly, how often do you use the app? Seldom, regularly or daily? How critical is it? Is there a non-subscription alternative that does the job? Is it not critical, a nice to have or critical or essential? How much is the subscription? Is it market related? Using the Creative Cloud as a measure, you should not be paying more than $5 per month for a top quality app. Also, at what level do you require the app? Deep, full featured or for the odd thing? Do not support apps that severely cripple the non-subscribed version. You should be able to use a full featured version with a once off purchase. Subscriptions should only be for cherries on top like access to extra libraries of stuff and collaboration features. If an essential tool or function is missing in this unsubscribed version, do not subscribe to this app. Does it adequately replace or fundamentally extend your desktop design experience? No, partially or yes. A final word to app developers. Stick to once-off purchases and single purchases for new and extra features. Please stay away from the subscription model. It is not popular and people don't appreciate their bank accounts being treated as watering holes. Before I get into specific design apps, I want to cover general apps that, in my opinion, are good for all design workflows, whether you're a graphic designer, web designer, photographer, artist or illustrator. This is my opinion, obviously other people might disagree. Firstly, Dropbox, the free version. As far as I'm concerned, the most stable and reliable way of getting your stuff from one device to another. The upgrade is from $12.50, which I think is quite steep, but the free version serves me fine. Next, Apple Music, which I've already mentioned. I listen to music a lot, especially when I'm designing and creating. And the $14.99 per month for up to six people uh, works out to about $2.50 per month per person, which is very reasonable. And I also mentioned Magster, uh, which gives you access to all the top design magazines and other magazines. Um, it works out to uh, $56 per annum, but if you hang around, they usually have specials regularly where they charge as little as $35 per annum, which works out to about $3 per month, which is very reasonable. 
The next app is called Concepts and it's the one that I think is uh, the best app for ideation and conceptualizing. Pretty much any design workflow requires some sort of ideation, sketching and conceptualizing and Concepts is fantastic for this. I would say that it is the starting point for design and not the finishing point. But it lacks precision path tools for finished work. Most notably a flood fill tool is missing and also the p a pen tool that is pressure sensitive to width has been on my wish list for quite a while. I use this app quite a lot as it is conducive to the free flow of ideas. The fact that it is all vector based is amazing for editing um, and also makes your work uh, a lot faster. Um, the developers also listen to their user base. The cost is very affordable. I'm not sure of the current price at the moment. However, they have introduced a subscription model, but they assure us um, that the non-subscription version will always be fully functional as per usual. So it will remain to be seen as to whether they stick to their word on this over time. Next is an app called Paper. Also for ideation and project conceptualization, but this is if you would prefer a pixel-based sketching app as opposed to vector-based. Um, the initial purchase is affordable, but you will be required to purchase additional tools in store for full functionality. Uh, again, these guys are leaning towards the subscription model. I don't really use this app very often, but I do know a lot of people who do. Um, I'm, wa I'm waiting to see how the subscription um, goes down. Uh, my, I may end up just deleting it if too many features are migrated to the subscription version. The next one is Font Book. Um, this is a great place to look at fonts, compare fonts, and get an idea of what fonts you would like to work with. You don't actually obtain the fonts here. This is more like a beautifully put together catalog for designers. It is very affordable and a once off purchase. Next is AstroPad. This extends your iPad to become an input device for your Mac or Windows computer. It kind of does away with the need for a Wacom tablet. Although it gets rave reviews, I find it lacking in features. For example, if you want to sit away from your computer and use something like Photoshop mirrored to your iPad through AstroPad, there is no way of inputting text. So if you wanted to rename a layer, there is no pop-up keyboard. I think it's best used together with a computer and not away from your computer as advertised. Given its limitations, I personally think AstroPad is quite expensive at $29.99 for a once-off payment and $79.99 per year subscription. Personally, I wish that Apple would build this functionality into a future iOS version and implement it better. Next, Adobe Capture. This neat little app allows you to capture color themes, vector shapes, get fonts from Typekit, create patterns, create brushes. It works best with the Adobe desktop apps, apps, but it's really a nice way to build up libraries of design assets. It is part of the Creative Cloud subscription. Behance. As most designers already know, Behance is like a Facebook for designers. This app allows you to browse and follow other designers and even manage your own Behance profile, and it's free. Duet is a very useful app that extends your iPad as an additional screen for your desktop. Uh, when I'm traveling, it is very useful to extend my 13-inch MacBook Pro's screen size with my 12-inch iPad Pro. It doubles my screen real estate. It's only $18.99 uh, once off payment, and I believe it's worth it. <clears throat> Next is Goodreader. This app is a great way of reading and managing your PDFs and other file formats uh, for quick reference. You can annotate your files and organize them effectively. And at $4.99, it's very affordable and a once-off payment. Wonderlist. Um, I've tried many organizers and to-do list apps. Wonderlist is the first one that really meets my simple needs. All I want is to have date sensitive to-do items that I can carry over day to day and organize into categories with the ability to add notes and comments. Wonderlist is perfect for me. It has an iPhone and Mac version that syncs with the iPad. So your to-do lists are always with you. I love this little app. The basic non-subscription version is absolutely fine for my needs and very affordable. Lightbox Trace. I often mix up digital drawings and designs with my hand rendered work so it's quite no normal for me to draw something on an iPad and then want to get it onto a hand drawing by tracing the outlines onto tracing paper and then off my iPad screen and then onto normal paper. 
The problem with doing it directly from the Photos app on the iPad is that every touch is registered and results in your tracing paper and the image on the screen losing registration. So this is a really simple little app. All it allows you to do is import your image and uh, size it and rotate it and then lock it so that no finger touches are registered on the iPad for the duration of that session so that you can trace that image accurately. It's really useful. Adobe Spark page. Um, I use this for creating amazing stylish animated montages of photos, designs, drawings and illustrations um, for sharing online. And finally, Adobe Post for creating professional looking posts out of your photos, artwork, designs, drawings and illustrations for Instagram, Facebook and other social media platforms. So there you have it. My uh, top general apps that I consider to be useful for designers. Moving on to design apps specifically, uh, of course we have already covered concepts and paper as ideation and starting point apps, but let's look at some others. Uh, so for general drawing, art and illustration, of course there's Procreate. Uh, I suppose considered the Rolls Royce of pixel based drawing apps. I love this app and everyone I know who uses it cannot say enough good things about it. It's slick, smooth and well engineered for the artist, illustrator and designer. It is well priced uh, at a one, once off payment. Um, there is one thing that really irks me and that is their refusal to include proper rulers and curves. It is frustrating that I have to use other apps to create my initial curves and lines before I continue in Procreate. Procreate. I don't understand their stubbornness on this issue because other apps uh, do have this feature. Um, and there are, yes, there are workarounds, but I just don't see the point in them not including those. And this brings me to the next app, Sketchbook. Um, this is the non-subscription version and it is a very decent sketching and drawing app. I really enjoy using it and the user interface is slick and it does have rulers and curves. Um, the non-pro version is very affordable. Next let's look at photo manipulation and editing. If you are looking for something that matches the desktop version of Photoshop, then look no further than Affinity Photo. This app has amazed me in how fully featured it is. No app developer must ever tell me again that the iPad hardware is what limits their app feature development. Just take a look at Affinity Pro to see what is possible with an iPad app and a team of really talented developers. I would go as far as to say that this app is going to give Photoshop a run for its money. And there is a desktop version to match. It's got a very slick design and, UI, um, and user interface. Um, I really feel that Adobe have been caught asleep at the wheel when it comes to iPad app development. I can't wait to see what Affinity has next in store for the iPad. Uh, I believe Affinity Designer is going to be their vector design uh, offering for the iPad and maybe even something for multi-page layout to give, uh, give you something similar to InDesign on the iPad. That would also be awesome. And their pricing is absolutely spot on and once off. My only cautionary note is that due to the sophistication of the app and its deep feature set, the learning curve is a little bit steeper than most iPad apps, but I think that's a good thing. Another good app for photographers is Adobe Lightroom. It gives you some basic photo enhancement and correction feature features that work as expected. Although it doesn't do that much more than the native iOS Photos app, it does integrate well with the Creative Cloud Suite. Let's look at uh, vector design next. So um, the one that I'm going to cover is Autodesk Graphic, um, which is a worthy iPad replacement for Adobe Illustrator. It has got a desktop quality feel to it and it does everything you would expect from a vector design application. Uh, it also has a desktop version that exactly matches the iPad interface, so there's no learning required. It's not the most exciting app, but it does what you would expect a vector design app to do, and I use it quite a lot, and the pricing is good. What about page layout? Well, this is where, at the moment, I'm finding a lack of full-featured iPad apps. There's nothing close to a replacement for something like Adobe InDesign. I am using Adobe Comp. Um, it's quite nice for roughing out some page layouts, but it's more suitable for wireframing and single page layouts. Um, Quark has something called DesignPad. I have looked at it, but I found it confusing and limited. 
can't wait for maybe Affinity to bring something out for multi-page layout. Moving on to web design, uh, I have not been able to find anything much for the serious web designer. Besides the imaging and graphics apps already covered here, there is something called Textastic a good coding app that gives you a preview of what your coding is doing. I do use this quite a lot, but other than this, nothing that comes close to something like Dreamweaver. And finally, 3D design. The only app that I want to mention here is Shaper 3D, a very interesting app with lots of potential. It's quite easy to use, but limited if you come from a 3D desktop app background like I do. It needs vector importing and the subscription is pretty steep at $150 per year for an app that is still very much in development. Luckily they gave me educational rights because I'm a trainer and lecturer. I would never ordinarily consider a subscription of this kind for a non-essential app. The non-subscription version is severely crippled and almost unusable. So there you have it my 2018 review of what I consider to be the best iPad apps for designers. I hope 2018 has a lot of lovely new apps for me to explore. And um, for those of you who got an iPad for Christmas, uh, maybe this uh, video will help you to make some decisions on what apps you need to purchase. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time.